I'm not detecting anything on the scanners. Maybe we're looking in the wrong spot? Subject should be around here somewhere. Keep searching. Hold up. I'm guessing something now. Keep heading two clicks north. Wait, there's this subject. Is that... What I think it is. Only one mag left in each weapon. Make it count. Be advised, the mission is to execute the threat before the subject spreads and becomes a problem. Use any means necessary. Back to point two. Switch! You're out! Strike underneath the couch. Quick! I'm... I'm so sorry. You know what you had to do. Make haste, Spartan. Stop wasting our minutes and commence your labor. Hey guys, Spartan Jess here. And the glaringly handsome steward. Uh, today the UNSC has instructed me to showcase uh, the gear that I wear on the field as well as the weapons that I wield uh, for each kind of mission that I get deployed onto. It's going to be the template essentially for the community to showcase their Halo Airsoft loadouts from, well, the UNSC Airsoft Training Division or really known as the Halo Airsoft community for short. So first we're going to talk about what I'm wearing specifically and then next I'm going to go into detail about the weapons and the props that I use. And then we'll go into detail about what to film and what not to film, what to provide for a showcase if you want to be part of this community showcase series that's gonna be on the channel here. And uh, yeah, we'll go from there. Uh, this is my Oni operative Sergeant Jess loadout. Not really derived close to my Spartan armor that I usually wear, but more or less for covert operations. Let's get into it. Okay, so let's start off with my helmet that I wear with my loadout. Uh, I wear a hyperballistic Halo Reach inspired Marine helmet. At the time, I believe I got one of the last batches that Hyperballistic himself was creating, but the same exact mold and design is available at Johnson Arms and Props Creations. I've also included some internal padding as well as an NVG GoPro helmet attachment. Next up, I have a couple of comfy patrol caps by Ink to You Treasures. Uh, one that's gray to match my dark Oni outfit, and another that's in green so it can match whatever kind of outdoor multicam I'd like to wear. Now let's look into the chest rig and shoulder armor. So the shoulder pieces were actually provided by a friend of mine who found a Halo 3 Marine armor off of Thingiverse and decided to print a couple of these shoulder pieces out. Uh, it attaches to my multicam by additional velcro that I added to the interior of them that connects to the velcro that's attached to the shoulder pockets on my multicam. I also went ahead and added some velcro on the outside of the armor so I could attach a couple of patches. After all, I have to represent my logo and the Spartan Brethren Regiment. Now for the chest plate, this is a Master Lehman's ODST chest plate that I custom painted myself and added Velcro to the front to accommodate the Spartan logo. Uh, it attaches to any kind of plate carrier that accommodates any molly webbing on the front of it. The ODST chest plate has a couple of inserts on the back of it that are designed to go into the molly webbing and stay attached to any chest rig. Now for the front mag pouches on the chest rig, uh, it's just an ordinary tri mag pouch that could hold a couple of M4 magazines for me, as well as a couple of Glock mags that I use for my my SOCOMs and Magnums. 
Now for the back of the chest rig, uh, I actually house an ice plate hydration pack with a tube that's actually fastened to the side of my plate carrier with some Velcro. And here you could actually see the tubing and the mouthpiece in order for myself to well hydrate on the field. And here we can see the actual ice plate that's tucked into the back of my chest rig. It does a great job with keeping myself hydrated and keeping my back cool as well. Now let's move on to my rugsack and what I carry along with me. Okay, now first we're going to look into the very first back pocket. Uh, this is where I carry most of my electronics like my GoPro Hero 9 and all of its accessories like batteries, lens protectors, SD cards, chargers, etc. And this is where I also carry my tracer units, specifically my BT and Bifrost tracer. And also I carry around some other GoPro and filming accessories in there. And I also have this old SJ cam. It's a good backup GoPro and fun fact, it's actually the very first GoPro that I ever used for this channel. Ah, good old nostalgia. For the second pocket, I actually keep tools like a hex key tool, spare speed loaders. I even carry around barrel covers so I could quickly put them onto any of my platforms if the field deems it necessary. And small emergency medical bandages, or maybe even medical bandages for some milsom like gameplay. For the third pocket, this is where I store some of my spare batteries, extra eye protection, most of my dead rags, and occasionally my mesh face protection. Hell, sometimes I'll carry around food in there. And a couple of more larger and softer items, neck covers, extra gloves, larger GoPro mounts, most items like this. And for the final pocket, this is where I keep all of my ammunition and gas supply. I usually carry around three cans of green gas, two or three bottles of 0.2 or 0.25 gram BBs. I carry around CO2 cartridges and also a spare set of various small screwdrivers to help me maintain some airsoft platforms when it's necessary. Now for the last of my outfit we're going to go through pretty quickly. I carry around a CTM holster to latch my foundry air soft magnum onto the side. The CTM retention holster is pretty good for what it is and it attaches to any regular belt. In these pockets this is where I usually place my empty mags or any other miscellaneous items. Usually I'll swap these plain black BDUs with the black multicam that I got off of Evike. For footwear I use very thick comfy socks and steel toed boots. At the end of the day you're not going to regret those comfy socks let me tell you. Now that we went into extensive detail about what I'm actually wearing whenever I go into a special operation or a training session uh, let's go into the weapons and gear that I run on the field as well. All right, so let's begin this segment with the Foundry Airsoft Magnum. Most of the members in the Halo Airsoft community recognize this kit, and it's pretty well known for its pristine injection molded finish. Uh, my favorite variation is the SOCOM variant. I just really like the way this thing looks. It really fits with the whole Oni covert operative look that I'm going for. And also, it's never really failed me whatsoever. At the end of the day, underneath the kit, it is an Elite Force Glock 17. Honestly, sometimes I actually use this pistol more than my primaries. <laughs> I have have a NC Star dual laser underneath the Foundry Airsoft kit. It definitely helps with aiming and it definitely completes that appealing SOCOM aesthetic. All right, so now let's move on to my pride and joy, my gas blowback MA40. So to start off, this MA40 was actually part of a group project to help teach the entire airsoft community in showing them how to create their own Halo Airsoft assault rifle. My version consists of a SSP-18 that's housed into the back of the Nerf assault rifle with a custom aluminum charging handle that I attach to the front side of the pistol. And yes, it is a pistol in the back. Uh, I wanted to go for a bullpup function for the rifle. And at the time, we couldn't figure out how to do an AEG bullpup version compared to today where there are some. So this is kind of what I went with, being the original idea of our Spartan brethren, Gabbler 32. And it turns out it works pretty well for me, especially since I like to run with the Foundry Airsoft Magnum while also using this AR because their magazines are actually compatible with each other. Truly a close quarters to mid-range combination. Another thing is I've actually installed my own ammo counter into the Nerf dummy ammo counter. What I used was one of the newer versions of the Westby ammo counter with a switch that's hooked up to the back of the rifle that counts the ammo counter down every time the slide of the pistol racks back and forth. I'm surprised I never got to show off a demonstration of the gun shooting before and recently has been working like a charm for me. But the icing on the cake is the fact that Master Chief himself, Steve Downs, signed this assault rifle. Ah, one of a kind. Next up is the Foundry Airsoft Battle Rifle. Now, I do apologize for lack of new footage for this kit. At the moment, I have this Battle Rifle cosmetic taken off of my UAR in preparation for the new Foundry Airsoft Injection Molded BRs, and also because 
It needs a little bit of love, let's just say. Luckily at the time, I did record some footage of shooting this battle rifle with the Burst Wizard Osfet that granted the rifle with a three round burst, making it just as accurate as its in-game counterpart. Uh, no ammo counter with this one, but luckily with the new upcoming battle rifle kit, it's actually coming out here pretty soon. We'll have an additional design to accommodate different ammo counters and also their own unique one. Their shipment of brand new injection molded battle rifle kits. They're also gonna be modular with this future Halo rifle designs, like the the AR and DMR. Myself and the Halo Airsoft community are very much looking forward to these new kits. And now we move on to something I haven't really taken to the field quite yet, being the Spartan prop creation Halo 5 SMG. Now a lot of Halo fans don't really like most of the newer weapon designs, specifically in Halo 4 and 5, including the Halo 5 SMG, but personally I kind of like it, just because it's essentially a mini P90 combined with a Halo 3 SMG, and I'm a fan of P90s. This is actually an entire 3D body that contained an AK gearbox, a P90 hop-up, and shorter inner barrel. Some of the unique features about this gun is a movable foregrip that I believe can house a battery for the built-in tracer unit. It's got an adjustable front sight and buttstock. And the magazine's a little tricky sometimes. It all depends on where you pull back the magazine. Because there's two mag releases, one on the left and one on the right. Uh, depending on where you pull the magazine, I recommend pulling it towards the tab that you're pushing, just so it's a little easier to release the mag. At least that's been my experience for it. Very well detailed and designed, and yeah, I'm a big fan of it. And now we move on to the Airsoft R&D M90 shotgun. Now this is a full 3D printed kit that's designed for a SEMA tri-shot shotgun printed in ABS, so it's definitely resistant to hot sunny days with a unique paint job that I added to it. I've had this kit for a while with the intent of getting some gameplay and review footage for Airsoft R&D, and since I've had it for so long, I eventually purchased it off of it. The shotgun itself hasn't failed me, being that it's a pretty decent Springer shotgun. The only hurdle I usually have with it is just trying to reload sometimes. It does reload from the bottom. And with the added length of the shotgun kit, it does make it a little hard to get to the door that releases the shotgun shells at the bottom. But other than that, it just takes some getting used to. And once you have it reloaded, it's just pull back the grip and shoot. Ah, the very first Airsoft MA5B, also known as the CB88. Originally created in partnership with Evike and Snow Wolf because of their scarcity, you either found these on eBay for a really high price, or if you're lucky enough, in the e-bike box of awesomeness. Wow, this is a thing of beauty. May I elegantly upgrade this classic MI5? Pretty please? Pretty please with a cybernetic cherry on top? No. This was my very first Halo-related airsoft gun, as it was for most people who've actually acquired this from back in the day. It's commonly known for most of its faults, but it's easily rectified by swapping out a MOSFET in the board. The rifle comes with a built-in flashlight that you can activate on the side of the rifle. There's also a couple of cosmetic LEDs, close to the ammo counter and front magwa, which I got replaced so they weren't as bright as the vanilla LEDs used to be. Got an ammo counter that counts down from 95, and a electronic selector that cycles between semi or fully automatic. And instead of being bullpup, the CB88 inserts its magazines in front of the trigger, while a fake magazine resembling the bullpup functionality actually houses the battery for the gun. It's undoubtedly one of the most rare and jaw-dropping rifles for a Halo Airsoft enthusiast to own. Being one of the only Covenant Airsoft replicas I have, the Boomco Needler conversion, which started from the teachings of Balahax Ryan. Surely I can enhance this one. Come on! My microprocessors are dying to use their artistic flare. By acquiring a boom code needler and dremeling out the interior and other parts of the body to accommodate an ARP9 with a custom made magazine that incorporated a mid cap and high cap with a custom BB reservoir installed inside of it that lets the magazine hold about 500 BBs. The only downside sometimes is the custom magazine. Being such a Frankenstein build down there, it needs a little bit of love and touch up for it to feed properly, but I have used this on the field before and it actually worked out pretty well for me. And also with the front threading of the ARP9, I could actually put on my Bifrost Tracer so I could simulate what a needler actually looks like firing with either pink or purple colors in front of the Bifrost Tracer. Overall, this was a really cool project that I did back in the day. It's an old decent build and it's worked great for me. And here we have my, well, my rubber knife. In some close quarters situations, I'll actually take this out and attempt to assassinate the enemy when they don't see it coming. Yeah! 
So to start off with some of the projects that I have on the side, I have two of them that are taking priority at the moment. One being the Helios Airsoft Modular Magnum set for the AAP-01. It's a really nice looking magnum that honestly resembles the Halo CE Magnum more than anything. It also comes with a SOCOM suppressor and Halo 2 variant. So pretty soon I'm looking forward to creating an assembly video and sharing the rest of my thoughts about these kits. And the other project is, well, another Helios Airsoft kit. That being the M7S SMG. This is actually a kit that they've provided for me to review and my first impressions so far are really good one of the most clean and competent 3d designs that i've seen it's supposed to accommodate the internals of an aap01 while still retaining the side loading functionality of the magazine as you know it from the games this is done by using the actual magazine of the aap01 as the gas supply while the custom magazines are the ones that actually provide your ammunition i'm very excited to finish assembling this one and finally here's a quick rundown of the collection that i have that i'm looking to turn into airsoft replicas we have the Nerf Bulldog, the Nerf Mangler, and Nerf Limited Edition Needler, the Boomco Spiker, and the Disguise Needler, the Disguise and Boomco Plasma Pistols, the Boomco Magnum, the Boomco Carbine for laughs and giggles, and two more Nerf MA40s. Good. God, man! Has the notion of getting a life occurred to you? But arguably one of the most important parts of this collection that I'd like to utilize in the future is the old Evike Master Chief helmet. Something that's almost as valuable as a CB-88. And uh, that's essentially everything that's in my arsenal at the moment. If you want to kind of uh, submit your loadout as well to be showcased on this channel, just follow the steps that we've provided here. Go into detail about what your specific character is. Be creative about this at the end of the day. Also, showcase all the weapons and the airsoft props that you use for UNSC airsoft training simulations. Now, if you're wanting to submit your loadout, check out the links in the description below for my contact information. And now, uh, I guess Stuart and I will demonstrate uh, how you should be recording some footage to submit and make acceptable for this series, as well as demonstrating what not to do. What? Why are you glaring at me like that? Well, first off, don't record your footage like this. Try to keep your recording device sturdy and straight. Yeah, maintain your subject in frame and focus on the individual parts of your armor and props. Please make it look stellar. Also, make sure to stay on topic with Halo Airsoft in mind. Don't deviate to... no. Uh, whatever the hell this is. When capturing footage or photos... Oh, um, over here. You almost got it. Yep, over here. Come on! Down here! There you go! Don't record in a 9x16 vertical aspect ratio. You're more cleverer than that. Do so in 16x9 horizontal ratio. Remember, we want to present you with appealing perspective. And for the love of the programmer, don't film your showcase in a public area. Do I seriously need to explain this one to you? Make sure to keep your footage in HD, 1080p quality or higher. Also, having another individual to help you with the filming process is sure to make life a tad easier. Follow these instructions and in no time the UNSC will accept your informative submissions. Stuart and I hope you enjoyed this very first episode in the UNSC Airsoft Community Loadout Showcase Series. We look forward to future submissions and thank you for watching. This is truly Combat Evolved.